Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Thursday, and it is June 1st, and it's the start of meteorological summer. The three warmest months, June, July, and August, are now ahead of us, and it is also the start of hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin, and the National Hurricane Center will begin its usual uh, coverage of tropical storms on a regular basis now with regards to their tropical weather outlook which you can find on their website, nhc.noaa.gov. And as you can see today, uh, we have tropical cyclone activity not expected during the next 48 hours, and nor is it expected, I believe, during the next five days. And as we, uh, I'll switch over to that particular part of the link, if it lets me, uh, having some slow wireless issues today. And uh, there it is. So this is the five-day outlook for the, uh, Atlantic. Now in the Pacific, um, same thing. Um, we've got just this one system, this tropical depression that formed yesterday in the Pacific. It has been drifting northward uh, at about six miles an hour, and it's getting very close to the coast, south coast of Mexico. You can see it here. You can also see that <clears throat> the um, system is approaching Mexico, where it kind of narrows uh, between well, the Pacific side and the Gulf of Mexico. So this northward movement would suggest that the moisture from all of this is eventually going to wind up in the Gulf, and that could wind up also getting involved in weather across the Gulf states. We'll see how models handle that uh, in, in just a second, but uh, not a well-defined depression. Top winds 35 miles an hour. I suppose that there's still some time for this to become a minimal tropical storm before it moves inland, uh, although the Hurricane Center forecast keeps it as a depression and then takes it across uh, to the north or north-northeast into the Gulf. So we'll, we'll uh, see if that has uh, any uh, ramifications on our weather in the longer term. So I'll, we'll address that when we go to the uh, surface map. In the meantime, in the east, we had some severe weather move through parts of upstate New York. Uh, <clears throat> there uh, was a possible uh, EF0 tornado in Dutchess County, uh, which is in the Hudson Valley, uh, north of Route 84, and like right about there. And there were also some severe storms that moved across Connecticut, um, a confirmed microburst just outside of Albany. Uh, they actually, the National Weather Service is sending a crew down into, into that uh, zone in Dutchess County. But from what was uh, what they've seen from pictures and video, they're pretty sure that it was an EF0 tornado. Otherwise, we finally got some drier air that's trying to move in, although we do have still a bit of a weak front that's going to uh, approach the East Coast. And that might mean for some uh, severe weather issues uh, for the Northeast, for Eastern Maine and Eastern uh, Massachusetts, uh, down to uh, Cape Cod and Rhode Island, where we have a marginal risk of severe weather. The back edge of the possible thunderstorm line goes to about New York City. So we'll watch and see if uh, this front, when it swings through, starts to produce a few cells on the back end. Uh, the only other areas today in terms of risk, we have a marginal risk of severe weather uh, through uh, parts of Texas into uh, southern Arkansas and northern Louisiana, and also in an area from uh, extreme uh, northeastern Idaho right in there on up into Montana. And you can see the general thunderstorm risk, nothing along the west coast and nothing all across the Great Lakes and much of the Ohio Valley and on up into the upper Midwest. So it looks like from the standpoint of severe weather, at least over the next couple of days, we see um, the risk not being all that high. Here's the risk for Friday, a little uh, finger up uh, in the upper Midwest into the Northern Plains. And as far as Saturday goes, uh, a small area of marginal risk, again, in the upper Midwest and uh, through, uh, looks like the Western half of the Great Lakes, nothing uh, in the Northeast to worry about and you know general thunderstorm activity elsewhere. So it's good that we're seeing uh, this activity beginning to quiet down. And uh, with regards to uh, where we're going with all of this, well, let's uh, take a look at what uh, the good old GFS does on the surface. So, you know, it looks like finally, at least from the standpoint of the weather that's in, in the northeast and down into the northern mid-Atlantic, which has been endlessly plagued by this marine layer uh, that we've been sitting in, is that's done. There is going to be another weak front that comes through late tomorrow, tomorrow evening, and there could be a shower or thunderstorm with that. But I think much of the time, certainly today and for much of tomorrow, 
uh, no issues and no issues for Saturday. So the start of the weekend looks good. And then as we move into Sunday, we have low pressure coming down from the uh, northern Great Lakes. And by late Sunday afternoon, you know, there's a bit of a warm front that's setting up. This system is coming out a little weaker uh, on every model run. And uh, there are some showers that could move into uh, areas from Pennsylvania on up into um, southern New England and upstate New York by later Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. And then they continue into Monday morning before that pulls out. And gradually the low kind of sinks south and east and offshore. So that's probably going to keep the northeast and clouds and rain into Tuesday before the weather system finally begins to pull away uh, Tuesday night and on Wednesday. And we get some general dry, uh, nice weather. So probably from later Sunday through Tuesday, weather in the northeast is going to deteriorate. And not of, uh, notice a lot of activity in terms of showers and thunderstorms across the Gulf states is kind of starting to look typical June in that particular area. And particularly with this front that's going to be sagging southward, it, it's going to be uh, producing a, a nice zone where convection can develop. And also we've got some uh, scattered showers uh, in the Rockies. But, you know, for the most part, the weather going forward doesn't really look all that um I don't know if you want to use the word exciting. I mean, there's really, you know, at the, the time of year now where it's just these weather fronts and tropical storms and, you know, occasionally you get the rare low that forms somewhere that causes some issues. Uh, activity in the longer term picks up a bit in the Pacific Northwest and in the West. Actually, look at this. If this is right uh, on day 11, you know, with moisture, and some of the colder elevations, even some June snows up <coughs> in the Sierra Nevadas. <coughs> and... Uh, We'll take a look at the upper air at this point, and then I'm going to go back and we'll talk about, you know, that, that tropical system. But here we have the uh, upper air. Let me just put this up for you and show you where we're going with the overall pattern. You know, one of the things that, that I'm noticing, you know, I, we could use the idea of the Super El Nino of 2016 was so overwhelming in the atmosphere that it's taking us an awful lot of time to work up all, all off all that excess heating in the atmosphere. And one of the things that's been happening is that the troughs in the east, which were virtually absent for a long, long time, except for the occasional periodic appearance, seem to be ha appearing more and more. And uh, we are uh, seeing the ridges in the east appear less and less. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the, you know, the, I'm just kind of observing this. I'm just wondering whether we are going to have a tendency for more troughs in the east during the summertime or not, because if we do wind up with uh, a, a lot of troughs in the east, you know, that could potentially be a problem if any kind of tropical system were to develop. Now, as we go forward, you know, we do have this tendency for higher than normal pressures up in Greenland and in the North Atlantic. And as we know, that does tend to suppress uh, the jet stream further south. And indeed, you know, even going into next week, here we have, you know, the next trough that's swinging down and around. It's coming in a, in a positive tilt. In other words, it's, it's northeast, southwest. So uh, it, it's going to be swinging down and around as it approaches the East Coast. So th this is just something that we're going to have to work through. And of course, also the time of year, weather systems just tend to slow down anyway. So that's why it'll, you know, something like this in the wintertime would probably go through re relatively quickly. But when you're in the, in the late spring, early summer, these things can, can take days to migrate across. And then it finally gets out of the way uh, by the middle of next week. Notice, you know, ridge in the, in, in the west. You've got uh, a low in the Gulf of Alaska. Here's your ridge. You got a trough, another trough that's coming down uh, out of Canada. You still have this kind of, you know, jet that's, that's the northern part of the jet stream is, ten is tending to dominate here. And yet another trough around day nine, uh, which is June 10th, uh, along the East Coast. And then that pulls out. See this upper high that's building up in the Atlantic toward Greenland again. But uh, here's a brief appearance of a, of a strong ridge uh, in the Gulf states on up to the mid-Atlantic states. We're kind of on the edge of that. So it might get, you know, very warm, if this is right, for a, a couple of days until another trough swings through in the northern jet. So you've got a pretty active stream here, a little bit of a blocking high that develops up to the north, kind of suppressing that jet a little bit further to the south. So 
Uh, right now, you know, again, we're going into typical summer mode, so that's going to mean things are probably going to be um, uh, somewhat on the quiet side. Uh, let's let me just switch off to the, here we go. We go into the uh, Western Atlantic, so we can take a look at this tropical system, uh, the tropical depression that's coming in, and I will back it up. By the way, tropical systems that cross over Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico side really don't have, it doesn't happen too often, is a general tendency for these things to move west most of the time away from the coast rather than move northward. But because we're so early in the season and the upper air influences in the jet stream are still pretty far south, we're seeing that happen. So here's uh, the initial uh, system right off the Mexican coast. And you can see the model kind of loses it, but that moisture zone, if you look where the green areas are, extend into the Gulf of Mexico. And the GFS does want to develop some kind of weak low in the southwest Gulf uh, over the weekend. Now, it doesn't really do much with it. That that may or may not mean anything. Sometimes the models do not handle, well, a lot of times, models don't handle tropical systems too well. Uh, so uh, it does show lower pressures in the southwest Gulf. Uh, also, uh, because of the time of year, uh, in the Northwest Caribbean and the Southeastern Gulf of Mexico in the beginning of June, that's usually where your prime development is. It's not often that you see it in the Southwest Gulf, but in another week or two, that area of development starts to spread westward to the Texas coast and then begins to spread eastward out into the Bahamas. So it's not impossible that something could come out of there, but for the time being, it's really more the moisture that the model is indicating that is, that is going to be moving up and getting involved across parts of the Gulf states. So at least it's going to mean probably for a lot of convective activity uh, from Texas uh, across the Gulf states and down into Florida uh, over uh, through much of next week with all that moisture. And then yet another low seems to want to form in the northern Gulf. Who knows what that means or what it is or what it isn't, whether it's tropical or not. But you know what, that's, that's something for down the road uh, for, with what we're dealing with. And, you know, when we look at the um, upper air winds, I just want to show you real fast. You can see how what's happening here with this uh, system. You know, you get very weak jet stream winds in the upper atmosphere. So it's kind of reacting. Uh, the, the, system, the, the tropical depression, which is here, is reacting really to the fact that the winds are generally southwest to northeast. Uh, just to the north of it. So it's kind of got caught in that flow. So that's why the models are taking this northward and not necessarily taking it westward, which would be the normal thing. And if you notice, as we go through, uh, you know, go through the rest of this week and going into the weekend, you know, the flow in the Gulf is generally light west to, to east. So that tells me, you know, something's probably going to settle in here. And, you know, whether it develops into something or not, uh, remains to be seen. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with with regards to that. In the meantime, uh, just uh, in enjoy your day. Uh, if you're in the Northeast, uh, uh, at least except in the areas where there's risk for severe weather. Um, certainly from let's say New York City and from New, most of New York State westward, it's and, and southward, it's turning into a very nice day. So do enjoy the sunshine now that we have it. Uh, you can uh, uh, check out uh, my, I did a video yesterday that uh, shows a couple of useful websites that you should have uh, during hurricane season, especially if you're weather geeky, uh, they come in very handy. Uh, that's on the uh, instructional video part of my YouTube channel. And if you subs please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get notifications and to subscribe, just hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. doesn't cost you a, a, a cent. Website posts on meteorologist joechaffee.com. Angry Ben's got New York City on nycweathernow.com. And you can download my app and subscribe to my forecast for New York City, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, Eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey. The app is free on iTunes and on Google Play. And uh, the uh, weather forecast subscription on that is just 99 cents a month. So for less than a cup of coffee, um, you can get uh, updated forecasts at least twice a day for those particular zones if you live there. And um, I get to, you know, buy myself a cup of coffee every once in a while or a cigar. All right, folks, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.